Arlo or Eufy for security cameras? There are three reasons why I like Eufy better than Arlo. A couple weeks ago, I asked you guys to submit some HomeKit and Smart Home questions that you'd like me to answer. Well, today I'm going to be answering 15 questions from YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And there are some really good ones. Starting off with the questions from YouTube, Rajiv asked, which is the best HomeKit security alarm? I went to get Ring security, but how to get it into HomeKit? Hoops is now 220 bucks, very expensive, and the Sterling Hub is only for Nest, will it also support Ring? If you're looking for a security system that works with HomeKit right at the box, then there are really two brands that have a complete ecosystem, and that is Akara and Abode. I am a huge fan of Akara, and they have a wide variety of devices and are some of the cheapest HomeKit devices that you can buy. Most of my smart home is actually Akara because they are very reliable and easy to use. They do require one of the many Akara hubs to connect their child devices together, but that allows for very fast response times, and all the hubs have a built-in alarm and a security system that is exposed in the home app. I have not used any Abode devices, mainly because they are way more expensive than Akara devices. Though they do focus more on professional monitoring for a small monthly fee, and they have devices to arm and disarm a security system like a key fob and a keypad. With Ring devices, you can use a Hoobs, which is a third-party bridge, and use a Hoobs plugin to get Ring into HomeKit. I used to use Hoobs, but then it kept on freezing on me, so I don't use it anymore, and I'd rather to have everything work with HomeKit right at the box to make my life a little bit easier. Ty asked, what is a foundational HomeKit bundle for a new home build? I made a whole video on my channel of how you can use only $100 to create an incredible HomeKit smart home and a bunch of automation ideas that you can do with only a couple of devices. And I will leave that down in the description below if you want to go and check that out. Next is Rashi and they ask, do Lutron Maestro Occupancy Motion Sensor work with HomeKit and does it need a hub? The Lutron Motion Sensor is different than other motion sensors in that it does not work with HomeKit, even though a majority of their other devices do. Now this motion sensor can only be set up in the Lutron app and only works with controlling other Lutron lights that are in the same room as the Lutron sensor in the Lutron app. But there is a workaround with what I call a double automation. You can create an automation in the Lutron app that when motion is detected, then turn on a Lutron light. And then create an automation in the home app that whenever the Lutron light is turned on, then have it control something else, say like a light strip or a smart plug. I'm going to be making a video soon comparing a bunch of different brands of HomeKit motion sensors, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see that. Charles asked, how to get smart switch to work with smart light bulbs? I would like the convenience of a switch with the looks of the colored bulbs. And I'm not 100% quite sure what you mean. If you're wanting to control the power and the color of a light, then a smart bulb will be the best option because it allows you to do everything that, that a smart switch can do, like controlling the power and the color and more. And I would not recommend having a smart switch connected to a smart bulb as this could create some major issues in the home app. Next question is, is there any wireless HomeKit camera for indoor use? Um, for natively with HomeKit, not really. I say not really because you can use a wireless UFO camera and just put that inside your house. It's designed to work outside, but it can definitely work inside your house. Or you could use something like Hoops to get the Ring stick-up camera into HomeKit, but those are really the only options. Sammy Garcia asks, Arlo or UFI for security cameras? I could make an entire video on this, but basically I have not used Arlo. I've only used UFI, so I can't say how Arlo performs. But what I can say is there are are three reasons why I like Eufy better than Arlo. And the first reason is that Eufy will give you free local storage of your footage. The Eufy recordings are stored locally on the Eufy base with a built-in 16 gigs of onboard storage. The Arlo HomeKit cameras require an Arlo base and it does not come with storage. You will have to buy your own storage, but you can get up to two terabytes of storage, which is more than Eufy. And the second reason is that Eufy has support for HomeKit Secure Video. HomeKit Secure Video will securely record various types of motion such as people or pets and more from your camera within the last 10 days. And the footage is encrypted on your HomeKit hub and only you and the people that you share your cameras with will have access to this footage. And HomeKit Secure Video is one of the best things about having a HomeKit compatible camera. Arlo said they have no plans to support HomeKit Secure Video and are committed to keeping your content safe in the Arlo cloud. Now, I personally feel more comfortable having my data stored in Apple's iCloud than in the Arlo cloud because Apple is known for their very strong encryption and privacy, but that's just me.
And the third reason why I like Eiffy better than Arlo is that Eiffy has indoor cameras that work with HomeKit. Eiffy has two different indoor cameras, one that has a set position and one that can pan and tilt. And both work with HomeKit and HomeKit Secure Video. Juan asked how to add HomeKit app on my Apple TV 4K. I don't see the home app on my Apple TV 4K. Now there's not a dedicated home app on the Apple TV. It's all built in into the control center on the Apple TV. And to get to control center, all you have to do is press and hold the TV icon button on your remote, choose the HomeKit icon, and here you can view all of your cameras, control your devices, or even run your scenes. Next question is how to make routine to stop music playing after a certain time. I've set up music to play and lights to go off, but the music does not stop playing even though I added a timer using the clock slash timer app. This can be set up in the Apple Home app by using an automation. All you gotta do is create a new automation and choose your trigger, then choose a scene or select your devices and the music that you would like to play. And then at the very bottom is an option for turn off and this will turn off all the devices and stop playing the music after a certain number of minutes. If you're using the shortcuts app to create this, then using the timer slash clock action to turn the music off does have its limitations. And I think it starts having issues if it's longer than like two minutes. So I would recommend creating this in the home app. Next up is questions from my Instagram. And the first question is, oh wait. Man, answering all these questions sure does make me hungry. So before I answer these next questions, I'm gonna need a snack. Hmm, what to eat, what to eat. Then I remembered I can't cook, which is why I'm super thankful that Skillshare is sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring courses for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. I'm not good at cooking. The best thing that I know how to make is cereal. I've been watching a course called The Perfect Grilled Cheese, a mini class to mastering the sandwich by Ilana Karp, a professional chef. And she shows how to make a basic grilled cheese with what bread and cheese to use and a few simple techniques to make the perfect grilled cheese cheese. After following her easy steps and trying my grilled cheese, I have to say, this is amazing. And what's also amazing is the courses on Skillshare have no ads, and a lot of them are short but have a ton of information. And you can get started today learning a new skill by using my special link down in the description below. The first 1,000 people to use my link down in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and supporting the channel. Okay, now let's look at some questions from Instagram. Amazon and Akara integrations will be great, and sure, all with HomeKit too. Only some, not all, of a car devices work with Amazon. This would include some of their sensors and cameras. And you can use these to control lights whenever a door has been opened or control any other smart device that you have. And I've made a bunch of videos on my channel of really cool automation ideas that you can do with a car devices, and I will leave those linked down in the description below. Kiki Adventures asked, what router slash modem do you use and why? And do they have dedicated 2.4 and 5 channels? The modem I use is from my ISP and the router I use is the Euro 6. Euro 6 is a mesh network so you can have multiple points in different rooms to have strong coverage everywhere around your house. And the Euro 6 is one of the few routers that actually supports HomeKit accessory security. And HomeKit accessory security gives you better control over what a smart device can or cannot access on your network with restrictions to protect not only your entire network, but also the other devices on your network as well. You can choose whether a device talks to other devices on your network, or you can block access to devices talking to a server. And sometimes, depending on the device, it may have issues if you don't give it full access to your network, which is not secure and makes you wonder why a device needs full access to your network. Bureau 6 has Wi-Fi 6, which is designed for a smart home, and it has a single network name that contains the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz channel, which is what I highly recommend instead of having two two separate SSIDs for your network. 40 year old skateboarder asked, as someone pondering switching from Google Home to HomeKit, is there any use for my Google Home Max, Google Home Max display, or do I need to bend them off? And this is a really great question. So there's a couple things that you can do. You can use devices that work with HomeKit and Google and use the Google display to control them. Though having two platforms with two different apps does make this a little bit of a complicated setup. So the best option if you want to keep your Google devices is to use a third party bridge called the Starling Hub. And this will allow you to get all of Google's devices into HomeKit. It. And you're able to use the Google Home Max and Google Hub as AirPlay speakers so you can send music from your iPhone to the Google Max just like you'd be able to do with a HomePod. And speaking of smart displays, my wife asks, what is your dream smart home product? 
And my dream smartphone product has got to be a HomePod with a screen. The HomePods are great for controlling devices with Siri, but I would love a central hub to see and control the status of smart devices all at once without having to use a phone or voice. This would also be useful to view your home cameras, to FaceTime, and control music. Now you can do a similar idea with an iPad on the wall, and that works, but a smaller device designed for quick actions and not to run off battery is what I really want. I used to use the Google Nest Hub and enjoyed being able to do this, but I got rid of it since the Google app was a bit too cumbersome and too confusing for me to use. There has been rumors of Apple working on a smart display, but nothing has been official. Tech with Tony asks, how can I get a HomeKit leak sensor like Eve or Fabaro to trigger my Akara alarm? So with just using the Home app, there's not a way to do this since the Akara alarm is not exposed in the Home app. So you will have to use a third party app to get this to work. Before I recorded this video, he actually sent me a message on Instagram saying how he was able to get this automation to work. By creating an automation automation in the home app that when a leak is detected, then run a scene to turn the M1S light on, which then runs a scene in the Akar app to sound the alarm. And then whenever the M1S light turns off, another scene runs that when the light is turned off, the alarm is turned off as well. And this is a great idea to get this automation to work and is not that hard to set up. Just Be Geek says, shortcuts for HomeKit. And I recently made a whole video on seven ideas that you can easily create. And I will leave that link down in the description below, along with a playlist of other serious shortcut idea videos I have made that you can check out. And the last question is from Twitter and it's from David James. What's the easier app to use to set up automations for a hue motion sensor to only be triggered when the lights are off, not when they are already on? And this can definitely be set up there are a couple of apps that can probably do this, but one in particular that I know of that does work is the Home Plus 5 app. It's $15, but it will give you a lot more attributes exposed and automation capabilities than you would find in the regular Apple Home app. And for what you're trying to do, you can create an automation that whenever a motion sensor detects motion, then it can check the condition of the lights. Then you can have it control other devices or run any of your scenes. If you have any more Swarm questions, be sure to drop it down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. And thank you for watching.